Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Mousetrap Genius. Well, as it gets to be spring and summer outside, there are gonna be more and more annoying flying insects that can be annoying and sometimes dangerous in the case of things like mosquitoes that can spread Zika and West Nile and other terrible diseases. Now, there is a great natural defense against flying insects out there. And that is an animal that's actually very closely related to our favorite, the mouse. It's kind of a distant cousin of the mouse that has wings. You guessed it, it's the bat. Now bats eat millions and millions upon millions of flying insects every day during the spring and summer months. So I would much rather have bats than mosquitoes and other flying insects around. How can I encourage bats to live near where I live? Well, one of the best things you can do is provide a habitat for them. Bats like to live in tight crevices in wooden structures, kind of like beneath the bark of a tree or in window frames, as you may have uh, experienced before if they invaded your house or apartment. So an ideal bat house is something that would emulate a structure like that. It would be a uh, tight space made out of wood with some surfaces that the bats can hang upside down off of when they're sleeping it out during the daytime. Now bat houses that are like that are actually pretty easy to build if you're comfortable using a circular saw and a screwdriver and measuring and all that stuff. And in fact, I'll actually go ahead and post some step-by-step -step instructions for how you can build a bat house down in the video description. What if though you don't know how to do that or you just don't have time? Well, it turns out there are tons and tons and tons of models of pre-made bat houses for sale online that you can just order and have shipped straight to your house. I looked at a whole bunch of them and decided to go with one that I thought was the best. This is a bat house made by the Audubon Society and it is crafted out of cedar wood. And I'll tell you why that's important. Cedar actually has a natural immunity to rot and a lot of different insects that would tend to turn untreated wood into mush after a couple of years outside nailed to a post in the elements. Now you don't want treated wood because that will be bad for the bats or might even cause them to uh, not live there. So the fact that it's made out of cedar is very important and you can actually smell that it's made out of cedar. It's extremely aromatic. It's also made of rough hewn wood, which is important because there's lots of little grooves on there for the bats to grab onto, but also the fact that it's not sanded very much makes it much more like a bat's natural habitat and makes it much easier for them to hang onto and live inside of. And this guy can actually hold up to 20 bats at once as residents. It's also handcrafted and made in the USA, in case that's important to you. So it meets a lot of criteria that I think are important in a good bat house. Getting the right bat house though, or building it correctly is only half the battle though. A big part of it is also placement. When you're placing a bat house, there are really, I think, three main factors that you wanna keep in mind. First, it needs to have sunlight. Bats like a warm environment. So you need to be careful if you hang this up on the side of a tree in the springtime when there aren't leaves out yet and then there end up being leaves and it's in shade all day, bats probably won't like that. Likewise, if you end up putting this on the north side of your house or a side that doesn't get sunlight, bats probably aren't gonna like that either. They like to just soak in those rays during the daytime when they're resting. So direct sunlight, as much as possible is very important, particularly if you live in a cooler climate zone, like as you can see, I do. The second thing is proximity to water. Bats need to drink water, just like most other things do. And if there's no water around, bats probably aren't gonna come. So if you can place this near a pond or a stream or something like that, then that's excellent. And it also has the added bonus of attracting the insects that the bats like to eat. You're more likely to find mosquitoes and other flying insects around sources of water. And last but not least, you wanna put it in a place where the bats will not be disturbed. If it's right next to a busy road or something like that where cars are constantly driving past, then the bats probably won't like that very much and may just never decide to move in. Likewise, you don't wanna put it somewhere where it's gonna be attacked by a dog or cat or vandalized by 
you know, people who just don't like bats. So those are three things to keep in mind when placing a bat house. And right here is a bat house that should work very well for you if you follow those three steps. I hope this video was helpful. I will post the link to this Audubon Society bat house on amazon.com down in the video description. And if you found this video helpful, I'd be really honored if you used our link. Also, don't forget to subscribe to Mousetrap Genius for more helpful videos just like this one. I hope it was helpful, and until next time, I hope you have a great bat-filled day.